Good evening and welcome to the Kim B. Davis Show. I'm your host, Kim B. Davis. And this evening, we have a wonderful treat. We have a new guest. His name is Seti Johnson. He is a fashion designer and stylist. And he has an exciting announcement that he's going to tell us all about. And tonight is going to be all about fashion. Good evening, Seti. How are you? I am doing absolutely fabulous. How about that? <laughs> and that is wonderful. And you look amazing. We are matching. So it's a wonderful thing. So Seti, I know you as the person who has designed the who's who. Anybody important in Detroit, you go on someplace, super fancy, top tier, whatever. You better call Seti Johnson because that's who's going to get it together for you. Otherwise yeah. than that, you're going to be talked about, and, you know, Chuck Bennett and all those people will talk about you be like, no, you, you were not, you were not, you, you bought something off the rack. We all know that. Just go ahead and have a seat. <laughs> but I want you yeah. to tell us about um, your design. And then sure. I want you to talk about what's getting ready to come up for you and why it's such a big deal. Okay. So uh, I'll, start from the beginning. I started um, playing around with my hands, being very creative as a child, but it was more of a technical thing. It was, uh, I was into electronics and things like that. I would blow fuses every other day and my dad would look around when the lights go out and knew, knew I had something to do with it. So um, I started shortly after that um, noticing and appreciating how well my mom dressed every day. And she's from the South. So she was very, very, very sensitive about the way that she looked. Even going to the market, she would have everything coordinated, shoes, the handbag and everything. So I, I, I was very uh, um, just, just enamored with the way that she looked every day, all the time, just for no reason. She would, she would be fabulous every day. So I started to play around with it. And I saw one of my aunts a long time ago come over with um, something that she had made. And I asked her where she got it from. She said she made it. And I absolutely just could not process that. Like, what do you mean you made it? Well, I had a pattern. I got some fabric and I laid it out and I sewed it on my sewing machine. And I was just blown away by the fact that you could make something that looked that good and you can do it at home. So that's what really sparked that whole curiosity about fashion design. And I, I literally, I can honestly say it was definitely, it's a gift that was just handed to me. <laughs> and I didn't really know exactly what I was. And one day somebody tapped me on the shoulder and said, kid, you're a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. And so I pursued the engineering and all of that. And worked for one of the big three in Detroit and retired as an engineer. And um, well, I worked with the engineers and, um, and started my own company um, in the midst of working for somebody else. So as long as I've worked for somebody else, I've worked for myself. And I started really young and I started exploring things. I started meeting people and going places. And it, it just bought me so much joy and enjoyment. And that I, I said, you know, listen, I got to do this. And if I ever get the opportunity to do this on the East Coast or ever in Paris, I was just blown away by the, by the whole act of the, the whole art of couture, haute couture, which is the highest level of design. So Paris and France and Milan, I was just, just, just blown away by the curiosity. I'm, I'm naturally uh, attracted to the highest level of anything that I'm interested in. So it was haute couture, you know, I was interested in fashion. So let me go to the top and see what they do up there. And so that led me to Paris and I finally made it to Paris about two years ago. And um, I made uh, quite an impact on some of the producers at the major shows and, and uh, got on some Instagram pages that I wasn't expected to be on. And they, they searched me out um, about a year and a half later. So back in the summer of 2021, they contacted me and said, listen, we're searching for, uh, we're doing a global search for designers around the globe that would be interested in showing their, their collections in Paris for Paris Fashion Week. And would you be interested? I said, hmm, let me think, yes. <laughs> That's 
absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I was just I was just blown away. Not to mention that it's been my absolute dream all of my life to show a collection in Paris during Paris Fashion Week. So this was just absolutely amazing. It was great news and I accepted it and I've been working on this collection for about eight months. So, um, but if anybody knows about the, 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 the world of couture versus pret a porter or off the rack as they call it. Couture, yeah. is, <laughs> couture is, is like the Super Bowl of fashion. It's, 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 it's like when you go and you make it and you get the opportunity to show, first of all, it's, Af it's, it's Black History Month. A Black yeah. designer from the US is showing a, a, a major collection in Paris for Paris Fashion Week is absolutely, and I hadn't thought about it, somebody, mentioned to me the other day they were like bro you 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 really are making history like this doesn't happen very often if not I, I think the last major designer was Patrick Kelly and he was out of New York originally and he was he was accepted over in Paris and he showed the collection over there and just went crazy and wild and um, so it doesn't happen very often and when I got the invitation I, I was just blown away and it was a it's, it's an absolute four decade dream that I've always had. And I'm, I'm excited and I'm, and I'm from Detroit. So, you know, I get a little hype anyway, so. <laughs> that is an amazing story. So you went from being a kid who was tinkering around with everything electronic, mm -hmm. blowing mm -hmm. stuff out, blowing fuses. And your daddy is like, look here, child, you, look, you, you, you need to stop. Out. Right. And then your aunt figure comes over with a pattern. And the world opens up to you, and here you completely. are, completely. Yeah. yeah. And you are thriving during the pandemic. That is such an amazing. Story. Yeah. Well, I knew. Well, uh, the thing about it was when I was over in Paris for the first time mm -hmm. in 2020. It was actually during Fashion Week, and we literally had to get out of there a day or two early because it was literally shutting down day by day by day by day. And I was scheduled to leave out, I think like March the 1st or something back then. So it's been, it's been literally almost two years to the day almost. So wow. um, we had to get out of there a day earlier just to avoid possibly getting, um, you know, held up in a whole nother country. So we ended up, I ended up getting out of there a day early. And when I got back, uh, when I got back to New York, I was, I was like, okay, this thing is going to uh, stop you in your tracks mm -hmm. or it's going to force you to figure out how to be more creative and, 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 and do things different because when the world shift, it's going to leave you behind or you're going to shift with it. And I, and I just chose to shift with it. I started doing things a lot different. I was doing things more online, and, you know, just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. We're doing things. We're having meetings. We're having meetings on we have Zoom calls meetings, you know, and, and because we couldn't meet up with anybody. You couldn't leave the house. So I had to figure it out. We, you know, just, just like the rest of the world, we had to figure it out. And not to mention me at home by myself, and a sewing machine and some scissors and some, come on, man. Do I, do I need to say anything else? I was like, oh, this is You cool. were in the lab. You were in the I lab. In the lab. Make, make I am trapped creation. in the lab. Oh, poor me. <laughs> that so is amazing. I was, so I was at the top of my creative, you know, Mountain, so you know, I could just be at home and do what I wanted to do and didn't have to leave at all. That it was like a, a dream come true. So I literally have been, um, I've been designing like crazy. This collection is so amazing. And the wonderful thing about it is not only am I doing the, the collection of clothes, I'm actually introducing a line of handbags, jewelry, and shoes. So all right. Everybody, <laughs> Everything on my runway will be my brand. And I am absolutely in awe, very grateful, very um, I'm just 
honored to say that I'm from Detroit and that's where it started from. And I've gotten such mad respect and support from Detroit. All of my clients, I've got about, I hear I've got about 30 or 40 clients that are coming from Detroit over to Paris. And I'm like, what? wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, how does this happen? So that, that you know, is love. So that is love. That is Detroit love. And that's yes. that's a that's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Yes, that is wonderful. So mm-hmm. I am so excited for you. And we, of course, Detroiters, we are so proud of you because you are going awesome. to represent us well. So I know we only have a few more minutes, but tell me what is your favorite design or who is the person that you have designed for that was your absolute favorite. Can you tell us that or, or, or is that going to hurt somebody's feelings? No, it's not. <laughs> I mean, I, I tell this story all the time because I've designed for some really, I've, I've had an opportunity to work with some really awesome um, uh, celebrities, performers, um, television personalities, radio personalities, but one in particular, and she's from Detroit, um, a little lady that sings her face off and always have. Um, you might know her, you might have heard of her. Her name is Miss Anita Baker. Yes. So she, <laughs> <laughs> she, she came to me years ago and, um, well, her producer, Michael Powell, introduced, he had been talking about me and, and uh, myself and a business partner had just opened up a store on Woodward right at uh, Merchants Row. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and he had been talking about, um, he had somebody that he, he wanted us to meet. So one day he, he brought Miss Baker over. We, we locked the doors cause it was still early. So we were like, let's lock the doors cause we don't want to be interrupted. And she just came in and, and, and she explained to me what she wanted and how she wanted the dress to to do what she does. And <laughs> when I move, I wanted to follow me. So she was giving me all of these instructions and I'm, and I'm, and I'm just taking notes. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So about a week later, we had a fitting after we decided on the, um, <laughs> after we decided on the fabric and, and, and the beautiful beaded lace, she came in and she tried it on and I heard, and things got quiet in the dressing room. And I was like, uh oh, woo. Oh boy, well, what have I done or what have I, or what did I didn't do? <laughs> so it turns out, it turns out she was literally just speechless. And when she came out, she did one of her famous twirls mm-hmm. that she does on, on stage and she twirls across the whole entire stage. And the dress did exactly what she wanted. And she looked around and she turned around at me and she said, you're a magician because you literally made this dress do exactly what I wanted it to do. And I was like, thank you, Miss Baker. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up, I ended up traveling with her on and off for about two years. So yeah. Awesome. So what, awesome. What you see Miss Baker wear or wore, um, even on some award shows, the Grammys, the Soul Train Music Awards, when she got her award, she was wearing SETI. <laughs> see, top tier, top tier. Now, who yeah. who would you like to design for that you haven't? Who is your dream? I haven't. Yes. I, I would love to design for Michelle Obama. Mm-hmm. I would love to design for... Um, she has a wonderful show in New York. Uh, oh, I can't think of her name. It's not coming to me. But anyway, um, okay. I would love to design for Michelle Obama. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Jill Scott. I just yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to dress Jill Scott so bad. <laughs> <laughs> she needs some yeah. sati. She needs a yeah. sati collectible. She needs some in her life. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so. Yeah. That is amazing. Okay, so one more question. Yeah. Seti, you are the expert. Give me uh, three things that mm-hmm. every woman needs to have in her closet to be put together. To be put together. Right. To be okay. put together, right. So the, the trick to really, really, or the solution, I won't say a trick, but the solution to really having a functional wardrobe mm-hmm. is to get 
two or three basic pieces like your little simple black dress mm -hmm. and build on that with your jewelry, your beautiful wraps and shawls, um, express yourself with your shoes. Those are all the things, your hats and your wraps and your coats. All of those accessories go around those, those key pieces, like that little black simple dress that you can wear a jacket with and you can take it off. You can add a shinier bobble versus um, a pearl for daytime. Same dress, change the shoes, change the bobbles take off the hat and the jacket and really, really, really just go straight into evening. So transitional pieces is key. That simple crispy white shirt will take you miles and miles and miles. Cause you can roll up the sleeve, you can pop the collar, you can put the collar down, wear it with a jacket, add a nice little scarf, do that whole uh, 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 corporate thing. But at the same time, take the, Take the tail out of the pants, throw on a little skinny pair of jeans and a nice little boot, and then pop the collar, put you a belt around that crispy white shirt and just button it down, you know, and give them mm -hmm. a little mm -hmm. something to uh, remember. <laughs> <laughs> and just really do that. And those are just little tricks that you can do. And I, I just named about three pieces. So I've mm -hmm. named the blue jean. I've named the the, uh, the simple black dress. And then you just work around that. You just mm -hmm. work around a nice, a nice tailored slack is always nice mm -hmm. that you can mix with, with those things and those jackets and those shawls and those scarves. And that's the trick too. And, and, and fashion changes so, so quickly that when you see something, don't necessarily, um, buy into that whole trendy i have to buy everything that's trending right now mm -hmm. just get you some if it's a certain color that everybody's wearing just get you the color scarf that they're wearing and or or that one little cute little jacket that you find on sale somewhere or something like mm -hmm. that but but those are just the savvy smart ways of you know building your wardrobe and every season you just add a little bit of this and add a little bit of that and you end up with a wonderful wardrobe and those suits break them up those suits that you have the skirt and the jacket break them up wear the skirt with something else wear the skirt with a turtleneck take off the jacket wear it with a jean split them up you've got six or seven different looks in one suit wow so, yeah. awesome awesome okay last question so for yes. the woman who saying you know Sadie, i don't have anywhere to go fancy I, mm. I i i'm going to pick up my kids from soccer practice i i go to the grocery store i go to the gas station i might roll to the library but nobody's really looking at me why is fashion okay. important to that woman fashion is important wherever you go and whatever you do if you're in that if you're in that 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 caravan picking up those kids from the soccer uh, practice or whatever you're doing, um, get that sweatshirt and take a pair of scissors and split it down a little bit and rip it a little bit and roll up your sleeves. You haven't changed anything, but it's just style is a state of mind. I mean, I have been walking down the streets of New York or the streets of DC or wherever I'm at, and I can see women that are, are you would look at them and say, wow, like she looks homeless, but this lady's got class and style and she's carrying all these bags, but she's, you know, instead of carrying it on her back, she's got it like this on her arm and she's, you know, she's just giving you style. So wherever you go, and here's another thing. Mm -hmm. I wrote an article years ago about how clothes make the man. Mm -hmm. And when you get up in the morning and you're feeling a certain kind of way and you're not really feeling your best, get up, dress as if you got somewhere to go and you will automatically feel better because everybody will acknowledge you and everybody will tell you how wonderful you look and how wonderful you are. So yeah, figure out something if you're just picking those kids up, pull that hair back, put on a pair of shades for no reason and be fly picking up the kids from soccer practice. That's what I say. And if you don't, if you don't have anywhere to go, take yourself out on a date, have a date with yourself. Be fabulous. You might come home, you know, 
<laughs> that is a perfect way to end our podcast, Sadie. Thank you you're so right. much. Fill and you're <laughs> absolutely fill it in. Take yourself out. You never Take know. Take yourself you out. Know. Why not? You never know. Right. Absolutely. You just enjoy your own company. And that is That's the it. best thing is to enjoy your own company. People but, will treat you like you treat yourself. That's right. That's I'll right. I'll find more out. Yeah. So, <laughs> but style so, is everything. <laughs> let me say this. If, yes. if anybody is interested in taking a look at my work, I've got about, yes. uh, about three or four decades of like work on my website and it's setigoestoparis.com. www.cedigoestoparis.com. Check it out. You can Excellent. scan, you can blow it up, you can bink, 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 ticker around with it and see what I do. Excellent. Okay, so you also have some other things. Tell us where we can find you on social media. Give us your website again and everything sure. else that you want us to know. Absolutely. So on Instagram, I'm SETI Collection DC. Um, steady, um, Instagram SETI Lifestyle. Uh, and Facebook, I'm just simply Seti Johnson, C-E-D-I Johnson on Facebook. Um, to reach me directly, you can always reach me at um, an email of Seti Experience at Gmail. And um, yeah, the website is SetiGoesToParis.com. The main website, but they all link together, is SetiAtelier.com. Excellent. And yeah. Atelier is a French fashion house. So Ooh. that's what Atelier means. So that's, Thank you. That's I learned something new. Yeah, I learned word. something new today. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Sadie, for being on the Kim B. Davis Show. We so appreciate you. We are wishing Absolutely. you luck and sending you yeah. love for Paris Fashion Week. And we want you to come Absolutely. back and talk yeah. to us about more fashion. Absolutely. Thank you so uh, thank much. Thank you for this invitation. No Marcus. problem. Thank All you right. guys for tuning in to the Kim B. Davis Show. I hope that you will join us on our next episode. You know that you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, everywhere where there is social media. And it's Kimberly Bachelor Davis, B A T C H E L O R. You can see this show at youtube.com forward slash Kimberly Bachelor Davis. You can hear this show on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and Google. You can learn more about me as an author at kimbdavis.com. Thank you again for tuning in. We hope to see you on our next episode. And as always, remember, be magnificent.